here we are. So as you can see, it's a, it's a desktop tool uh, and you can download it uh, for free on NIME website. And with this, you're able to do any kind uh, of uh, data science from accessing the data all the way to the deployment. So um, to show you how it, it works, let's just uh, open a workflow that we can find here some basic example in our local repository. So for example, building a simple classifier. Now I'm opening this and you can see here from the NIME Express, I selected a workflow and this is open in the canvas of uh, uh, on, the, on the workflow bench of NIME Analytics platform. If I double click here, I can enlarge. And this is how our workflow looks like. You have uh, this, uh, we call NIME nodes and each of these nodes does a fundamental task of uh, the data science process, starting from reading the data to uh, applying some colors to different rows based on attribute, then partitioning between train and test, training a decision tree, then uh, scoring the decision tree on data that the model has never seen before, and with a score and note, evaluate performance. This is a different way to do data science. It's called visual programming. You are not coding uh, and you basically are drag and drop uh, with using this visual interface. If I click here on the really top, execute all executable nodes, all the nodes will go, will, uh, will go green because data will flow through the workflow and, uh, and execute each different part of the workflow. And at each given point, I can always inspect the data to see how it looks like. For example, file table, here is the data that was just imported. Then we have color manager. This is the data that is uh, um, colored by a certain uh, categorical attribute. And, and so on. This is, makes it also transparent and, and easier to share. But how do we build a workflow with all these tags, with all these different nodes? Let's start from scratch so it's uh, easier for everyone. So I'm going now to uh, the NIME Explorer here where I can access uh, local and also remote uh, repositories of workflows and data sets. And I can right click and select new NIME workflow. I can call it this whatever I want. I will call it virtual learner. So now I created a new workflow. And as you can see, this new workflow is open here in the workflow brand bench. But unfortunately, it's empty. I mean, unfortunately, it's brand new. So it's a, it's a blank sheet. We need to add some nodes. The first thing we want to do is to add some data. So how do we add some data? I'm going to select here the data. And uh, this is uh, still in the example for uh, repository here in your local workspace and select a data set, which is called, uh, let me see, adult CSV. And when I can take this CSV file and just drag and drop it on the empty canvas. Now, when I do see that this is the configuration of the node automatically sees how to read the CSV. I just need to click okay. And the node now is uh, yellow. In yellow, it means that it's ready to be executed. So if I want to now execute this node, since it's yellow, I can do so by right click and execute. Now the node uh, is now green. And this means that we have data now imported in nine on the output of the node. Now we want to do some operation on this data. We want to do some data manipulation and we want to find a node to do so. How do we do that? We need to go in the node repository down here. And for example, uh, maybe you're familiar with SQL, you might want to do a group by operation. So we can select in here the group by node by searching for it, group by, and I can then either drag and drop it, or I can select the file reader and double click the group by node. Those two are uh, different ways to do the same thing. If I was not going to double click and I just drag and drop it, then I can connect it with two nodes by just drag and drop again and connect the two nodes. Just now that the group by node is now yellow, you can see it's red and there is this warning here to explain me 
what's happening. And it says, please select at least one group or aggregation column. In fact, by just adding the node, we did not configure it. We need to configure it. So how do we do this? I'm going now to uh, simply um, uh, uh, right-click on the node and click configure. This is the configuration dialog. Each node has a configuration dialog, and you can use those dialog to basically uh, select um, the settings of the node. In this case, we're going to do a manual aggregation on work class, and then we are going to have also um, an average on age. So as you can see, we are now going through all the setting of the group I, but by simply clicking the two columns, I want to perform this aggregation. I I now performing uh, um, an aggregation. I'm here enhancing this for later for when we will use interactivity, the highlighting option, and then I click OK. Now the node is yellow. This means it's ready to execute. So I can go ahead, execute the node, and now see the output of the node. And um, as you can probably see, I'll make this bigger with the control plus. You can see now that for each working class of those different uh, uh, data, this is, sorry, a, a data, I didn't mention this, about the census data set from 2007. Uh, the point is that we know the working class category of all those uh, people, and we have federal government, local government, it's about the USA, and so we have private and, uh, and so on so forth. So those are the average age for each uh, working class, but come on, there is also a better way to look at the data uh, that is looking at the age distribution by the, this different working class. For example, I can use a violin plot. And the violin plot, maybe I do not have it installed on my name because it's coming from an extension called Plotly. Nine integrates really well with other libraries. So what you can do is that you can go on the website called app.nine.com and you can type in here the, the node that you want to use. For example, violin plot. Now I will select only nodes and then I will select the violin plot. Now at this point, I can simply take it, drag and drop it. Great. So now I added this node and it's part of the Plotly extension. If I did not have the Plotly extension, I, uh, Nine was going to ask me to install it from our update site. So um, it might ask you, please install this node and then you go next, next through a wizard execution and then you restart Nine and you're able to use it. Great. Let's now use this visualization node. How does it work? Well, it needs data, so we need to feed some data here. Great. Then second, we need to select the configuration. So I'm going to go on violin plot and select the age again and the work class again. So now I select the age and the work class. I click OK. And now I can right click the node and go execute and open views. Now, when I do this, it's a bit different than just uh, seeing the output of the data because when you execute and you open the view, you have the built-in web browser of Nine coming up with an highly interactive uh, uh, visualization. And um, in this case, uh, uh, you can simply mouse over on things and we can uh, change your certain settings, for example, regarding the tooltip and so on. Uh, we can here play with other settings like zooming in, zooming out, and, and there are many other JavaScript visualization. But this is all great. Let's use some color. How do we add color in Nine? Well, we need to use another node. So we need to go in the color node repository and we add the color manager node. The color manager node is great, just that we need to uh, uh, add it here in between those two nodes. Now, to add a node in between two nodes, um, we might need to deconnect them, but there is another trick I would like to show you. You can simply mouse over and then drag it, and this will add automatically connect it in between. We open the settings of the node, we select the working class, we click OK, and now 
the, the, the node is, um, um, is connected. And if I open, execute the node, and then go in interactive view, then it will um, show the same plot of before, just that now it's being colored. Okay, so um, this is uh, to have uh, a visualization, but what if I want to add something more complex, like a dashboard? Also, this is possible in I. You just need to use more than one uh, visualization node. Let's, for example, drag in a table view node. This is uh, a JavaScript node simply showing a table. And uh, when I add the table view node, and you can see it's blue as well, or I, maybe I, I can customize a few things by double clicking, whether I want to display row colors, display the row keys. We can maybe leave it like this uh, at the moment. And then another functionality of Nine is to use components. So for example, I add a row filter here that I will need later. I select all the nodes that I want to put in my, uh, in my component. I select all four of them. I right click and then I select create component. This demo is to show you a bit of many functionalities at the same time of time. We'll, during the workshop, we'll go slow through those topics. So I click OK. And I select here uh, visual, uh, visualize uh, work age by work class. This is a custom name I decided. Now you can see that the nodes are now disappeared in these components. And that this component is uh, quite similar to another node, just that inside you can do component and then open, and you will find the nodes of before. Something interesting is that we can also use a visual layout to uh, um, decide how the dashboard will look like. I, I did this by selecting this button up here. So now I simply set them one next to each other. I click Finish. I go on the outside. Now this component, I execute it just like it is a node and open its view. And now I have not just the violin plot, I have the violin plot next to the, um, let me put this bigger, next to the, the table view. And what's interesting is that, for example, if I select on the uh, table on the right side, I can now see some interactivity being communicated on the other side. So let's say that, for example, now I just want to focus on federal government and local government, and I go for close and apply. This way I'm saving my selection. I close and apply, and with a row filter, I can say only um, select the, uh, this category, right? And, and to do this, I take the column that the uh, table view generated, and I select true. When I do this, now I can see here that I have only data about those two, um, uh, work class, and I can add, for example, I don't know, another table view here and create another component. Why am I doing this? Because I would like to uh, show you in a second how this can be useful when you want to show this uh, sequence of web pages, not just by to another colleague using nine, but by pretty much anyone. So um, another topic here is to have those uh, dashboard to be deployed remotely. Until now, I showed you how to access the data, how to model the data, and how to visualize it. But then there is also the part where you want to make it available to others by deploying it in a reliable way, and also to make it easy, easily accessed by anyone, not just by who is using the analytics part. So on the left, you can see our open source software, the desktop application that has all those different integration extensions and uh, uh, all the ones producted, uh, produced by NIME are all, all open source and free. The way uh, the business model works on NIME is that when you want to deploy something produced with NIME, you can use NIME server, our com commercial offering. 
And this means that with Name Server, you can uh, uh, have a software that is uh, uh, installed on a cloud solution like Amazon Web Service, Azure, or Google Cloud Compute, or on premises. And you can also access those workflows via the Name Web Portal or via, for example, uh, uh, REST API or other deployment solutions. 